and we can measure a protein called PSA, prostate-specific antigen. It's a little different than what I mentioned a moment ago. This is just something that the cancer releases into the blood. And we take a blood sample, and we can actually measure how much of that marker or biomarker is in. And as we treat the that we treat grandpa, what we want to see is that number going down. That is an indicator that the cancer, which is all throughout his body, is actually um, taking effect. So we're actually having some anti-tumor effect on that tumor. Not only that. We can image patients. So this is a man that's on our trial. And using that same approach that I talked about earlier, where we were imaging ovarian cancer and so forth. Here's prostate cancer. You can see prostate cancer, it starts in the prostate, which is down here. But when it gets into the bloodstream and starts going everywhere else, metastasizing, it likes to, to stay in the bone, mostly. So you'll see it all in the bones here, bones here, uh, you know, up the spinal cord and so forth, the femur, and, you know, all, all over the place. It is a nasty disease when it gets to this point. When we treat this guy with our targeted radiation, and this is three months later, everything that's in the bone is gone. It killed all the cancer. Now you say, okay, Chris, what's this? What's all this stuff here? Well, that's the bladder. This is the, the targeted radiation that didn't stick anywhere, and now it's gone or it's out the door, so to speak. Here's your, your kidneys, it's being filtered, some part of your test, a little bit of liver. Um, all of this stuff in a few hours will come down the background, because we just took an image after an hour. But what was most important is to see that none of the tumor really still is there. And this guy's living right now, pain-free, apparently no tumors, and we just gave him some extra time on this earth. That's pretty cool. Right? If it's your grandfather, if it's your father, that's pretty cool to be able to do that. Why? Well, it's because we learned the first principles of biology and chemistry, put them together and use some logic and said, hey, this potentially could work. That's what science is. That's what science is. You ask questions, you come up with hypotheses. You say, all right, what if this, what if that? I'm going to end with one more topic, and this is, to me, even really cool. maybe a step above that. Um, this is called targeted immunotherapy. We all have an immune system. What does that mean? Well, in our bone, bones, I should say, we have stem cells. And these stem cells can divide and differentiate and produce all kinds of other cells. Again, this is something you've probably learned, probably you've heard about, but unless you put two and two together, it may not stick in your head until you're like me, where you gotta go back and relearn it and say, oh, no, now I understand, now I get the bigger picture. It's not for everybody, I get it. But for those of you in the room that really are interested in science, pay attention to this. So you have these stem cells, and they differentiate to all these other fancy name cells, and I'm not gonna go into all of them except for one. This is called the T cell. Uh, you may have learned that the AIDS virus, HIV, uh, actually infects the T cell. What happens to an AIDS patient when they uh, lose all their T cells, or the vast majority of them is now prone to even, you know, you sneeze on or something, they can get very sick because they won't have the ability to fight infections. Well, guess what? We're going to exploit that cell and we're going to turn it into something that's going to really want to kill the tumor. These are like sentinels. Remember the movie The Matrix? You guys ever, were you too young for that? Or you know, there's a couple of them. Remember they talked about the sentinels going and trying to hunt down the people? That's what this cell does. So it goes to hunt down the infection. Uh, or things that shouldn't be there. Well, we can train them to, to uh, get the tumor, to fight the tumor. And we can take them out of a patient and actually use molecular biology and train that T cell to recognize something that's on the tumor. We call this a CAR T cell, chimeric antigen receptor. I'll give you an example. Here we have a CAR T. This is a T cell that we've engineered to, to express this protein. Here you have a tumor with a known receptor. Let's just say it's a Foley receptor for now. We at our company have developed what we call adapters. They're bispecific, which means one part of it is going to recognize the tumor. The other part is going to recognize this CAR T. And what we want to do, because this cell has the potential to kill a tumor, 
but we need them to kiss. And the way we do that is using that bispecific adapter. Now they come in close contact, and when that happens, this T cell recognizes this, releases uh, its fury on the tumor to kill it. This is the molecule we use to do it. We have created this cell to recognize a yellow dye, just an innocuous yellow dye. It's called fluorescein. If we inject those cells into people that have cancer, those cells alone do nothing. Why? Because that yellow dye is nowhere in your body. And so we come across and give that patient EC17 or folate, which binds to the folate receptor and has this yellow dye attached to it. So EC17, when we inject that into mice, and in this case, mice were injected 11 days earlier with tumor cells, and the tumor cells went all throughout their body and they created metastatic lesions. Here you have the open thoracic cavity of the mouse. Here's the heart, here are the lungs. If you look closely, you'll see areas of obvious pathology. You'll say, all right, that's not right. Um, but, you know, heart looks fine. If we inject EC17 and then shut the lights off, the nice thing about this yellow dye is it's fluorescent. So we can put a UV lamp on it and find out where it went. Look at all those yellow dots. That's all cancer. The heart doesn't express the folate receptor, and that's dark. Why? Well, there's no place for EC17 to stick. Okay, so think of it in this terminology here, that we have now painted, we have painted these tumors to be recognized by these T cells. We have given those T cells a place to go to fight. We've done the same thing in humans. So this uh, patient of ours, she had ovarian cancer. And she was going through surgery uh, to have a lot of that uh, cut out. I know you don't really realize what that is, but that's her, <laughs> that's her innards, and there's a lot of cancer here. But if you turn the lights off, you'll find out we're EC17 labeled all of her cancer. This is being developed right now to aid a surgeon to actually more optimally cut out the tumor during that initial surgery. Because the more tumor you have taken out, it usually translates into living longer. Anyway, the reason I threw this up there is to just show you the power of target and how close. That's a cluster of maybe three cells right there. I mean, it's that, it's that uh, specific. Uh, all right. What I'm going to show you here is a video of another patient that has osteosarcoma. Uh, I think this guy is about 18. Not too much older than you guys. 18. <clears throat> and what you're seeing here, uh, let, me, let me go back, sorry. Let me tee this up for, just for a second. Here is, uh, he's going through surgery. And I'm almost done, so just bear with me here. Uh, he's going through surgery. This is his lung, and this is a side-by-side -side image. This is the chest cavity, you can see the ribs. So the surgeon is going in there because he knows that there's one tumor lesion to go in there and cut it out. But what he didn't know was that there was actually two. And about an hour before this surgery, this patient was dosed with a folate targeted dye to light up where it is. And so this was meant to help the surgeon find. So pay attention to this, if I can get it. Whoop, I think I'll need you, Evan, we'll go back. Yeah, if you can press, yeah, thank you. Whoop. We'll get there. Let's try it one more time. Uh, bummer. Okay, there we go. Here we go. So you'll see on this side, this is no fluorescent light, and this will be fluorescent light when they turn it on. There's the tumor they knew was there. And so as soon as he turns on a lamp, Boom. Ah, there it is. Let's cut it out. But then he's like, wait a minute, what's this? All right. That's not so obvious sometimes. That's, that's another lesion. And so he cut that out, and the pathologist said, yeah, that's cancer. That's also cancer. They would never have known that. Never have known that unless we lit it up. And we targeted that dye to light it up. This is the same dye we're going to use in the immunotherapy approach. So just to fast forward quickly here, this, this therapy works. It works very well. And using those same mice, just to show you for illustrative purposes, if you don't treat, the tumors grow. If you treat with our immunotherapy, the animals survive and live well. I, I think that's all the science I really want to show you. 
Um, the last two slides, really, this one here is just the take home messages. What do I, what would I hope you would take home with you or leave the room? That cancer develops when a normal cell loses its ability to control how it divides. First principles. You can kill these tumor cells by inhibiting the processes that control division. I gave you a few examples there. Old chemotherapy makes people sick because the drugs go everywhere. They kill normal organ tissue as they will the cancer. So drug targeting is obviously the better way. We can target imaging agents to help view where that cancer is and to also have a higher degree of confidence that our targeted therapy will actually work against uh, or for those patients. And I gave you examples, multiple examples of targeted therapy. We talked about the SMDC approach, targeted chemo. We talked about the targeted radiotherapy with the lutetium. We're also going into uh, other forms of, of radiation. And then the CAR-T approach. And lastly, in science, so obviously I showed a lot of stuff here. Um, it's more than me. I direct my lab, but there's a lot of people that are involved in this. You have to give credit where credit is due in science. It's very important. People work very hard. Uh, this is not easy. This is creating something new, creating something because people have some wild idea and they pursue it. And this is my group here. It's made up of chemists, toxicologists, biologists, animal pharmacologists. They're all very smart people. Um, and also, last I would just want to thank my mentor, who's still an active professor at, at Purdue, uh, Phil Lau. So I don't know if there's time left, but I'm happy to take questions if there is.